Today I'm showing you some tips and tricks on how to sew swimwear. What I did was I traced a existing bikini top and bikini bottom and I made myself some patterns. After I made the patterns, I cut the pieces in the fabric and in a layer of power mesh. And now we're going to cut and sew them. This is item 325864. It is Bananas and Leaves UV Protection Compression Trico. Mood Fabrics has this awesome feature with most of their compression trico fabrics that actually has UV protection woven into the fabrics so it keeps you protected from the sun. One really major feature of trico fabrics such as this is that there is four-way stretch so that means it stretches in both directions. Here is the selvage edge, which is nice and clean. So if you were doing a design where you wanted to have raw edge, you could definitely make seamless piece of swimwear. So if you wanted to do maybe like the waistline without a seam, it's definitely better that you line your swim fabric with a power mesh. Um, if you don't have a power mesh, you can just do like an elastic or a fold over for the, the raw edges and then do a zigzag stitch. I'll show you some examples of that. You should definitely almost always only use ballpoint needles. These are used for stretch fabrics, knit fabrics, tricots. Um, this is item number 112634 and you get five ballpoint needles. You get two size 11, two size 14, and one size 16. The higher the number, the thicker the needle. You should definitely also use thread to match. I think the yellow goes best because the background color is yellow. More often than not, you should almost always only use a zigzag stitch when you're sewing stretch fabrics because the fabric needs to stretch with the stitches after it's been sewn. When you cut your fabric, you definitely want the stretchier of the direction to be the stretch that will go across your body. I showed you guys how I traced a bikini top and a bikini bottom that I already owned and I made some patterns. So this would be my bikini top pattern for just like a basic triangle top. And this is my bottom pattern. All I did was trace it and then I joined the front pattern to the back pattern so I could just cut one continuous piece and have that be on the folded edge. You could also make a gusset, which would be the piece that goes in here, or you could make your top and bottom pieces reversible and just use two different prints and you would sew those two pieces right sides together and leave an opening at one of your seams, flip them to the right side and then top stitch that. If you do choose the route to do your own DIY with creating patterns by tracing a swimsuit that you already own, you'll definitely need some compression trico, the sewing machine, thread to match, this is item number 100445. You'll also need pattern paper, scissors, pins, and elastic. I'll show you a set that I cut from my patterns. You'll definitely want to cut your outside layers. So this is my two cup pieces with the right sides facing out. I also cut a second layer in a power mesh. You can use a nude color or any color that you like. If you line your swimwear with a power mesh, it's bound to last a little bit longer because this adds kind of like a lining support. If you wanted to put in like cups, you could sew both of these pieces together and leave an opening here 
You, or you could even fold back one corner so that after you've sewn all of your edges, you'll baste first, then you'll flip all of them down and do your zigzag stitch to clean finish that so it looks nicer on the, the right side. So that would be two self pieces, two power mesh, and I did the same for my bottom here. And this is not finished, this is just pinned together right now. So I have my power mesh on the inside, and this is ready to roll. Now I'll show you guys how to sew some stretch swim fabrics. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna match up our self fabric and our power mesh. As you can see, I have some silk pins in here already. You can use as many or as little as you like. Just be sure that you pin them all along the edges and not within like the center of the fabric because you don't want to make any marks there. So I have a ballpoint needle on my machine right now and I have my yellow thread to match. So I'm going to start just by doing a zigzag stitch which is going to baste both my self fabric and my power mesh together. So on most machines, the zigzag stitch just looks like a zigzag. It's either the second or third setting on your machine. I'm gonna make my width get a little small. So I'm gonna do about like a two and a half width and I'll do a two and a half length. It's pretty tiny. Always practice first to be sure that you like how it's turning out. You can use like a scrap fabric. I'm kind of doing like a fake serge edge now just so it's nice and clean finished. And I'm being sure to sew really close to the edge there. And while you're sewing, you're, you're gonna wanna pull just a little bit because remember, this zigzag stitch is going to wanna stretch with the fabric once you have it on your body. So I'm just doing my zigzag along the edges. Stretch fabric and swim are really tricky, so just all I can suggest is practice and change the settings on your machine so you can become familiar with something that's comfortable for you. Now we have our basting, which is all the way around the edges here of my cup. So the next step is you're gonna turn that edge over. And bear in mind that all swim patterns definitely indicate the seam allowance. In my case, I added 3 8 of an inch. So I'm gonna fold all of my edges over, all the way around to the wrong side, to the power mesh side. If you do not have elastic, this is the alternative and it would be just to fold that edge over. You can leave your machine still at the same setting for the zigzag. And then you're going to zigzag your, that raw edge right on top. So I'm just gonna do this one side and then I'll show you guys the other option which is with elastic. But elastic is more for waistbands and under the bust band. So if you're doing something that's more of a style like a sports bra, that's when you would use elastic. Unless you want it to have a little bit more snug fit, you could use elastic on the leg holes as well of your bottom. So now I'm just doing my zigzag stitch to catch that raw edge. And I'm still pulling just a little bit. If you pull too much, your fabric is gonna like get all wiggly and it won't lay flat on your body. And that's your edge. So it looks really nice and clean and super kind of like expensive almost on the right side. And then you can see as I'm stretching it, my stitches aren't snapping. That's because we pulled a little bit while we were sewing. So that would be my bust line there. That would kind of sit like at center front. Pretty cute. And then you could make your spaghetti straps by just cutting 
If you wanted to make that a little bit more narrow, you could use your rotary mat and your rotary cutter. So I'll just cut this in half. So now each strip will be about three quarters of an inch. And I'll just show you a really quick trick for straps. So we're gonna change the setting on the machine back to a straight stitch. And I'm gonna, this is definitely a little bit more advanced because I'm not gonna use pins. I'm just gonna fold it over and eyeball it. And I'm gonna stitch as close as I can to the edge. This might be a little bit too narrow for some beginner sewers. So you can always do it like a full inch and just sew it so that your folded edge to the raw edge is half an inch. And I'm just pulling again a little bit while I'm sewing because this is gonna have a lot of tension as a strap. So you wanna be sure like it doesn't break when you're wearing it. And then you do your back tack. Always do your back tack at the beginning and the end. All right, I'm just gonna trim those loose ends. So there we go, we've got our spaghetti strap. And one of the best tools of the trade is definitely this bad boy, it is a loop turner. So you're gonna slide with the hook open into your spaghetti strap. Oops, I have a hole there, so ignore that. And then you're gonna hook the bottom edge here onto the folded edge of your strap. And then you close the hook and you would pull Pull this through and be sure it doesn't snap. Once you've turned that inside out, you'll have a spaghetti strap. I would just top stitch this piece to this piece and voila. I sewed my side seams. I don't have a crotch seam on this because I just made my pattern one continuous piece. And I did my zigzag stitch along one of the leg holes. Came out a little wobbly, but that's okay. Because once it's on, it's gonna stretch anyway, so it'll lay flat. So for the waistband of a bikini bottom, you can either take the measurement of your waist from your bikini bottom, and I would subtract about an inch, depending on the stretch that your, that your elastic has, otherwise, Wherever the waist of this bikini bottom falls on your body, you can wrap the elastic around your body and be sure that it's just snug enough, like, you know, like if, as if you're pulling it a little bit first. Um, and then you would sew, you would cut and sew that to your waist. So the elastic is typically a little bit smaller than the actual waist on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you a different way other than the step I showed previously where you would take the elastic and since this has glitter, I'm gonna put this as if it were the right side, facing the right side of my waistband. So I'm going to pin my elastic to my waistband. I'm just gonna do a short bit so I can show you the full step for this. I'm gonna stretch my elastic just a little. Then when you bring this all the way around, you can do like an overlap of about like half an inch of the elastic so that that doesn't come undone. So I'm gonna sew my elastic at just about like one eighth of an inch. Depending on the width of your elastic too, you could go a little bit deeper. But since my elastic is only three eighths of an inch, I'm gonna do an eighth. And I'm just doing this on the straight stitch. I'm gonna pull a little bit while I'm sewing. Now that you've sewn right sides together of the elastic to the right side of your bikini bottom, you'll flip the elastic to the wrong side. You can get a little bit of like a lip there, which is fine. And then you would pin the elastic again. Kind of makes like a nicer, cleaner finish, I think, to the top edge than the zigzag but elastic and stretch fabrics are pretty advanced if you haven't tried sewing them before. So it is a bit of a challenge. All right, so again, I'm just sewing this one sample. I'm gonna do on the straight stitch again. 
and I'm gonna sew one eighth of an inch on this edge of my elastic. And I'm gonna stretch while I'm doing that. It looks a lot cleaner, I think, a lot more expensive, a lot more like better quality when you have the power mesh in there as well. So that portion there has my elastic inside the waistband. Look at that beautiful stretch. You don't hear any snapping because I stretched the elastic in the fabric as I was sewing it. So that's a few tips and tricks on how to sew swimwear. Don't forget the styles that I showed you guys. There is the zigzag to cover the raw edge first, then fold over with the zigzag. Then we had the basting of our edge. So this is just a straight stitch baste versus the other sample had the zigzag. Then we put in the elastic for the waistband. And I showed you how to make spaghetti straps. So good luck. Can't wait to see what you guys turn out with. Tag us.